funny. <laughs> okay, so the last episode we talked about um, the defense and the conversation came up of, well, are, are, is, does the staff really coach guys up? The personnel. Right. Yes. Yeah. So what, like, what makes players a good fit for Buffalo? I think is a really wild conversation because mm-hmm. the Bills have a very different approach to drafting. They do. And it's the last few years has seemed to work out for them. So what my initial thought process here is, I want to take a look at the last two years in the draft, right? Okay. And look at of the of the position they drafted, the player drafted before them and the player drafted after them. Did the Bills win this or did they lose this? And what about that player made them different than the player above or behind? The reason I think that's really cool uh, to talk about is because you mentioned Tremaine Edmonds, right? Okay. Tremaine Edmonds was not a coverage linebacker. He was a straight blitz in the backfield nightmare in college. Yes. That's what he did well. And what did they do? They drafted him and put him in the one spot on the defense where literally getting into the backfield is the hardest (laughs) job on the field. You cannot get a middle linebacker in the backfield. You have to scheme that guy into the backfield. He will not get there. He's running through a wall. Mm -hmm. So why would you, what about Tremaine Edmonds that they see that said, you know what? I bet you this guy can cover. He's an athletic freak. Right. It was athleticism, right? Yes, yes. Athleticism and, and I assume a willingness to learn. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Plus right. the fact that he was 12 and they have him for <laughs> So I'm looking at, uh, let's see here. What draft is this? I got 2019 pulled up. 2018 is the one you got. We can do the 2018. That's when they were drafting. Him and uh, No, Allen was in the 2019 draft. No, he wasn't. Uh, was. 2019 draft. Oh, Ron Josh Allen. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Josh Allen and the Jaguars. That's <laughs> so stupid. Because we'll just look at true position, right? Okay. Quinn and Williams for the Jets was the player drafted ahead. So wait, we're not doing the train with Jermaine Edmonds? No, I figured we'd do Oliver and then work back to okay. Allen and Edmonds. Okay, so we're going to start with the most... Uh, most recent Not draft. the most recent, the 2019. Yeah, 2019 draft. Because we don't know about the 2020 players okay. drafted yet. Okay, so you had Ed Oliver in 2019. Drafted right ahead of him was Quinn and Williams at third. Oliver was obviously drafted ninth. And then the next defensive tackle taken after him was Christian Wilkins in Miami. So if we take a look at that. All in the AFC East. It's so amazing. Yeah. That could have been a defining factor for Oliver as well. Oh, you think so? Well, with looking at that Miami needed to solidify their front. Yeah. That was the first year that Flores was there. Mm Mm-hmm. Being a student of Belichick, you always yeah. want to secure that front wall, mm-hmm. especially being in a 3-4 system. I know they're all hybrids now at this point. But then Quinn and Williams goes to the Jets. Right. Buffalo Bills are saying, listen, we're going to have to, con- we're gonna have to counter this. Mm-hmm. Because the Jets and the Bills have been doing that for years. Yeah. Jamal Adams, mm-hmm. Tredavious White, Josh Allen, Sam Darnold. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, them two. Um, well, and truthfully speaking, there's there was a lot of DTs drafted in the first round, but then you get to the second round, and it is just a DT wasteland. Right? Yeah. <laughs> the next, if the the first defensive tackle drafted in the second round was uh, Tristan Hill from the Cowboys at 58. So they went from I think like six defensive tackles went in the first round, and then just a just a parking lot, nothing, an empty parking lot of defensive tackles in the yeah. second round. So you look at value. The Bills are like, well, Oliver's the clear winner here. Yes. But what made Oliver more valuable to the Bills than Christian Wilkins? I like Christian Wilkins and all a lot. So you look at a 4-3 versus a 3-4 technically, mm-hmm. he's going to be a three technique. Now, right. Christian Wilkins is a horse. Right. You put him in the middle on a nose. I know he really didn't play too much nose, but he has the versatility to play a nose more than Oliver because Oliver was underweight. Right. Oliver was underweight. So Wilkins time. was a lot bigger than him at the right. time. So uh, in the middle of the segue, for those of you who are interested, we do have our hashtag sports. Uh, I wear this mask to remind me not to talk to New England Patriot fans. Uh, merch, you can, if you do order this, please make sure you tell us what you want. Um, because we had people order, and uh, had they not reached out to us ahead of time, we wouldn't have known that they wanted a mask or a decal 
Uh, you get the decal and the mask for 10 bucks, or the mask or the decal for 5 Just let us know what you want. Yeah. Um, you can hit us up on PayPal, Venmo. Um, it's, it's, all, it's all in the community tab, so you can find it. Everything is in the community tab. <clears throat> Quinn and Williams was a pipe dream for the Bills, right? Yeah. There's no way Williams is getting the nine. No way. No. No way. If Oliver went three, Williams would have went to nine. If Oliver went three, somebody would have jumped to get Williams. You think someone would have? So. You think someone would have traded multiple assets for a defensive tackle? <laughs> Miami, hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, they did. No, they did that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and counter that point. No, go ahead. You, I'm, I'm <laughs> tapping out. Did the Bills win out between the type of player that they like to draft? They typically like to draft guys that they could mold into the role that they see them in. So. Were, were um, Wilkins and Williams products of being in those big team systems, right? Were they a product? Was that their peak performance? Let me let me put it to that way, right? A lot of times people say, well, this player, you got to draft this player. His college production was great. But sometimes that's the player's peak. They're in a perfect system. They're the right body type. The right responsibility was assigned to them. They understood it, right? When you draft a player, you're completely taking away everything they know. The, the, all the verbiage is significantly harder. This is now their job. It's their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So do you think they drafted Oliver knowing that he hadn't peaked, whereas Wilkins and Williams, you could actually kind of make that argument. You can make, argument. That, argument, yeah. you can make that argument. Did uh, – did, where did Wilkins go? Clemson. Yeah, there we go, right? So you got Clemson and Bama and yeah. Houston. Right. That's what I mean. Well, I think what the Bills like to do, just trying to take this to the Bills, not so much the production of Wilkins and Williams, what they did in college. You bring take this over to the Bills now. They love versatility. Mm -hmm. Where could you have done? What could you have done? We even had like six episodes on it where Oliver could have went. Right. You could put him at defensive end. Yep. Seriously, you want to put Vernon Butler and Jefferson in the middle, sure put can. Hughes on one side, Oliver, Oliver on, on the other. other. Sure can. What, sure what's can. to stop them from doing that? Yeah, they sure can. You can't do that, I think, with Williams and, and Will. 100% agree. Right. So both of those, to me, uh, in the 3-4 systems, you got Wilkins and Williams playing a 3-4, mainly 3-4 systems. They can they could drop down. Their versatility lies in going to the nose. Oliver's lies into going out, not right. in. Right. So, Which is not common for a defensive tackle. No. No, which makes it very rare, which makes it very hard to defend. Mm -hmm. So if you're just if you're you're just a guy that's going to plug the middle, I mean, we talk, we can even go back to. You're trying to talk about guys that like Aaron Donald mm -hmm. and Dama Kinsu, guys that are just mean and nasty in the mm -hmm. middle there. Um, Oliver showed in college that he was so versatile at doing a bunch of different things. Mm -hmm. yep. Wilkins and Williams were so like you said they were surrounded by so much talent. Mm -hmm. How did you know if it was them or somebody else? I think in college, it's a lot easier to out-athletic another team, right? I know that's yes. sort of a weird statement, but I think everybody will understand what I mean. Typically speaking, the team with the better athletes will win college football games. The scheme doesn't always <laughs> Alabama matter. versus Troy. That's what I mean. It's, just, just it's better athletes, right? Yeah. If you outnumber them in athletes, you will win in college football. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes when it comes to drafting, that makes it really hard to determine who is the better player because while they are more athletic, you have to ask yourself, what's the scope of what we can ask this player to do? Were they just successful because of all the other athletes around them? Because when you get from the college game to the pro game, everybody's athletic. They're all athletic. I'm pretty sure there was a Bama and a Clemson guy drafted in the first round around Wilkins and around... Williams, not maybe not in that draft, but the following draft. Mm -hmm. I can't remember another Houston guy being drafted around. Yeah, yeah, around that's, Oliver. yeah, that's oh no, that's a fact. Yeah, that's a fact. All right, so let's move down to the second round. That was Cody Ford. Greg Little went to Carolina. I liked, right ahead of him. I liked Little too. That's why I, I, I missed missed the boat on that one. I thought they were going to take Little. I did too, but I he too. perished down in Carolina. Oh, God, so bad. So bad, and Bean's face was shocked and embedded when they when they took. Well, he was convinced. He knew exactly what they were going to do. He knew it, right? He definitely knew it. Um, Carolina he, skipped Buffalo to take little. They didn't sure they? did. <laughs> yeah, they they traded with uh, from the Giants via Seattle, uh, and Buffalo traded up 
from Jacksonville via Oakland. So, anyway, um, uh, Cody Ford goes at Oakland. So Cody Ford goes at thirty-eight. Greg Little goes at thirty-seven. The next tackle was Dalton Reisner at forty-one, and then you don't see another offensive tackle taken for another uh, ten plus picks, right? So again, a pocket that the Bills said, we got to get in the middle of, right? It's weird how that works. There's the last couple times the Bills have drafted players that you want to get in the middle of where that pick is, right? When they're trading up, they're trying to get in the middle because they think they know something that the other teams don't. They don't think that their guy's going to slide past that position, right? It's like a fantasy football draft, Paul. You got to think about it. I know that's a dumb comparison. Let me explain myself. When there's a run, do you know you have to – okay, I have to have three guys in mind in this position. Right. Because it, 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 I'm going to be the third guy picking, and there's four guys I want. Mm-hmm. So I'm in good shape. Right. The Bills probably say, listen, let's get up to this spot because there's – yeah, there's two guys we could take out of these three that are going to go. We're good with that. Let's get – like you said, let's get in the middle. Let's do this. Yep. So in that respect – they have the confidence of their staff to say, as we even mentioned before, hey, if we have the possibility of these two guys being on the board, which one do you want? Which one would you be more inclined to work with? Who could you do more with? Right. And maybe Cody Ford was that guy. Dalton, Dalton could have been that guy before probably outranked him. Mm-hmm. Sure. It could have been little, mm-hmm. but they were skipped. Yep. You never know. He went to Carolina. Let's. Well, they, they were pretty – the, the look on McDermott's face, because he even said, oh, they're trading up for a tackle. And he, they, he was like, they're trading up for a tackle. We're not going to get him. Because he knows Marty Ernie. He thought he knew Marty Ernie. Yeah, well, he did. Yeah. So the player drafted after was Dalton Reisner, which, again, Denver was so bad last year. I, but I like I liked Reisner better than Little, even though I liked Little a lot. Ford was third on my list because, yeah. guess what? I thought he was a guard. Yeah, I mean, there's another. There's I didn't project him a tackle. I, th- I projected him as a guard. Yeah, there's another habit that we can talk about. Mm-hmm. All right, so with from as far as a player perspective, did the Bills win with Cody Ford versus Reisner and Little? Based on the production of the first year, yes, they had. They had. They had. To. Okay. 